Hey everybody, welcome to Board Game Barrage, and today we're going to be looking at a board game review. Hey guys, welcome back to Board Game Barrage. You're here with Jeff, and today we're going to be looking at a review for not a Kickstarter game, but uh, one you do get online, Llamas with Hats, Hungry for Hands. So this is by uh, Film Cow, same guys that did the actual video videos, uh, Llamas with Hats. And uh, the game essentially is, it's a small card game, as you can see, it's a tiny little tin, not much to it, but um, the object is to survive Carl's wrath um, when he eats people because he's hungry for hands and he runs out of severed hands that he has collected. Uh, the game is played over a series of rounds, it's pretty quick, uh, it's for two to six players, takes about 10 to 20 minutes, uh, depending on how many players they are, and depending on the different actions that uh, happen to occur in the game. So, the game is pretty simple. Uh, each round you're going to be moving people along a uh, player line, trying to get um, to a safe place, which is denoted by certain cards, or by where Paul is. Um, the game ends after um, a number of rounds, depending on the number of players that are playing, and uh, at that point Carl will take out his wrath on everybody who is in front of the uh, Paul card, uh, and he just kills everyone that's not uh, behind Paul. So if you're behind Paul, you win because Paul saves you. So it can be a multi-person victory or everyone could lose and Carl could actually win the game. So the game is really cool. Um, I'm going to run through it all for you and then we'll come back here and I'll let you know what I thought of it. So let's go take a look at how it sets up and how it plays. Hey guys, so I'm going to teach you how to play Llamas with Hats Hungry for Hands. So card game is pretty simple um, just a whole bunch of different decks of cards so to start off you're gonna get a Carl and a Paul card uh, all you're gonna do is put the Paul card face down over here and the Carl card just kind of sits off to the side there uh, the next thing that's gonna happen is everyone's gonna pick their people so you've got six player cards uh, with different names and they don't actually do anything they've just got flavor text on the bottom so you can pick any ones you want, one for each player, obviously. Uh, so we're going to play a three-player. We're going to go Chad, Devin, and Jessica. We're going to grab them. And they're going to go face down on top of the Paul stack. The next thing you're going to do is grab the guest stars. And there are six different ones. There's the space-time rip, the sheep, the faces, the Paul mask, the meat dragon, and the dead guy. And all you're going to do is shuffle them up and randomly take two and add them to the stack. The rest are just going to be set aside. Uh, then you're going to set up the board. So the way that I like to set up the board normally is just a long line, but it's a really long game and I don't have that much camera space because I'm operating with very little materials. Here we go. Carl's going to go up there. I'm going to just do two lines to show the round counter and then the actual player line. So, what you're going to do, you're going to shuffle the stack and then you're going to flip them over in order. So the front of the line is going to be up here, the back of the line will be back here for playing purposes. So at the front of the line you got the sheep, then Chad, then Jessica, then Devin, then the meat dragon, and then Paul. So Paul is at the back of the line. Um, then you're going to take the severed hand cards, which look wonderful. You're going to shuffle those up, and then you're going to take out four for a four round game. The rest are going to be set aside. Then you're just going to place them like so in order. Now you're almost ready to play, all you're going to do is shuffle the anomaly cards, which are special extra effects that can happen throughout the game. And their place is determined by where the two guest stars are and Paul. So you're going to put one under Paul as well. The last step, you're going to take the action cards, which are extremely simple to understand. Literally, they just have the text, whatever they do, like that, simple. You're going to shuffle those up. And each player is going to get one. So we'll just do something like that. 
Now, how the game works is it takes place over a series of rounds. So each round, uh, you got like this hand, then this hand, then this hand, then this hand. And each player is going to get one action on their turn. And the way rounds work is whoever's furthest from the front of the line goes first. And then it goes back that way. So first would be Devin, second would be Jessica, third would be Chad. Each player only gets one turn. Uh, so if you move to the back or move to the front, you don't get another turn. It's just you only get one, and then it keeps going forward from you. So the first thing that would happen is Carl would eat this hand, and he and the effect of this hand would take place. So move Paul in front of the player currently furthest from Carl. So this happens. So move Paul in front of the player currently furthest from Carl would be there. Then you would start the round and it starts from the back of the line and goes forward with each player. So Devin would go first. If on your turn you're over an anomaly, you can either activate or deactivate the card. The card, obviously the back side is deactivated. The front side is activated and its effect is now in the game. If a guest star ends its round positioned above this card, replace it with another random guest star and then activate the new guest star's movement effect. So I'll get into that. Basically, at the start of your turn, you're going to draw an action card. It'll go into your hand, so you'll have two. And then if you're over one of these, you can either flip it up or face down, or you can either choose to do nothing or flip it opposite of what it is. So we'll say that Devin flips that up. And then you must play one of your actions. So move Paul to the space behind you, or move yourself one space forward. So basically all that would happen is, basically he's going to go in front of Paul. So he's going to play the move Paul to the space behind you. So simply Paul moves there. Then it would be Jessica's turn. So right, Carl moves up. Jessica draws a card. And it says, move Paul to the space behind you, or move yourself one space backwards. So she's going to move herself one space backwards, which pushes Devin further up. And then Chad would get to go. And he gets move yourself one space backward, or switch places with another player. So he's going to move himself one space backwards. And move to there. Uh, once everyone has gone, at the end of the round... Um, the guest stars get their movement effects based on whoever they are, and they start from the back of the player line and go forward. So since this is the first one, his says at the end of each round, move the meat dragon one space forward. So quite simply, he moves here, and then the sheep would go, and the sheep says at the end of each round, move the sheep one space backwards. So the sheep moves there. Then any anomalies happen. So this one is the one that says, if a guest star ends around position above this card, replace it with another random guest star. So you go to the guest star pile. You put the meat dragon in. Well, you randomly pick one. It goes there. You put the meat dragon back into the pile randomly. And then this is activated its movement effect. So the new one is faces. And faces says, at the end of each round, Move the faces one space toward Paul. So they're already next to Paul, so they just don't move. And that's how you play one round. The next thing that would happen is Carl would eat this one, and it would get its effect, which is the player furthest from Carl draws and plays two action cards this turn. So simply all that's going to happen is Jessica would go first. She would draw two cards. So now she has three, and then she would play two of them. So switch places with any guest star. She would do something like that. And then she could move Paul to the space behind you or move Paul one space backwards. So basically, neither one of those would do anything. So just like that. And then her turn would be done. It would go to the next person. And then Devin would go last. Again, since Devin is on top of this anomaly, he can choose to activate it. Also, since she did get two actions, she could technically, before her second action, flip that face down. Uh, and that's the whole game. Once Carl has finished eating all the hands, and there's no one left, 
uh, everyone gets one last turn on after the fourth hand is eaten. And then after that, we'll just do something like this. He would be back to here. Um, after everyone's gone, say this is how the game ended, Carl would then eat and kill every card until he got to Paul. As soon as he gets to Paul, Paul does that thing where he goes, Carl! And Carl stops. And anyone behind Paul wins and survives. It, that, that's it. It's that simple. And that is how you play Lamas with Hats, Hungry for Hands. Welcome back. And that was Hungry for Hands, Lamas with Hats. So as you can see, the game is pretty quick. Um, I don't really have anything negative to say about the game. Um, it's quick. It's fun. There's stuff going on that you have to worry about. Uh, there's uh, backstabbing. You can screw people over in like the last round. Um, the one thing I will say is the first few rounds, you don't really seem like you care about what happens. It's only really the last round that stuff happens, which is, I guess, a downfall. I really don't mind because it's funny. Um, the random effects that the severed hands give you um, is definitely neat because it can change the game. Uh, there's a lot of factors involved because there's random ones. Uh, so they change every game. Uh, the anomalies change every game and their position changes so based on the player line and how the initial setup goes that can change um, the guest stars can change as well so there's a lot of replayability to this tiny game which i think is cool um, yeah so that's going to basically wrap it up for us i really like this game it's really quick and it's you know it's easy to bring out for anyone it's easy to understand all the cards literally tell you what they do simply you know like Switch places with Carl, or Paul. Switch places with Paul. How difficult is that to understand? You look where Paul is, you switch with him. Move one space forward, etc. Um, yeah, so that's going to do it for me. That is Lambs with Hats by uh, Film Cow, and you can grab it on Amazon, and you can also go to Etsy.com and grab it from them. Uh, so thanks for watching, guys, as always, and we'll see you next time. Take care. Thank you so much for watching our video. For more, you can visit our channel for weekly updates or subscribe below. Thanks again!